Hey, it's Greg here with MaritimeGardening.com and I'm out here moving some heavy rocks in the garden. Uh, some of these rocks are too big for me to pick up. And some of these rocks are like this one here. This is probably, I don't know, somewhere between 100 and 200 pounds. I'm, I know I can pick this up. I can pick up 200 pounds. But, uh, you know, how many times in a day is it wise for me at 50 years old with, you know, various back injuries over the course of my life, how wise is it is it? to pick things up like that, especially when I have to do a lot of it, when there's other ways to move heavy objects. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three ways to move heavy rocks in the garden that you might not have known about. And the first way um, is the easiest and the best. So the first and the best way to do this is with a dolly. Uh, these cost anywhere from, I, I've seen them from, from almost as low as $50 or maybe $80, I guess, is probably more realistic nowadays, uh, and up, right? Um, and, you know, really the most important feature when you're looking for one of these is a rugged construction and big wheels. The bigger the better, right? Ideally the size of a wheelbarrow wheel, but that's pretty hard to find. But the bigger and fatter the wheel, the better, because it's, it's just easier for maneuvering around the garden, easier for moving the heavy stuff. But with one of these, um, I mean, you can, you know, a relatively small person, I've had my kids out here helping me. I mean, they're like 12 and 14 now, but even when they were younger, a relatively small person can easily move something that weighs 100 pounds, something you would never, ever think a small person could move. But with this dolly, I mean, they've got all this leverage, they've got, they've got the advantage of a lever, they've got the advantage of a wheel, right? I mean, they've just got so many mechanical advantages. So here's the trick for it. You put the, uh, put the dolly downhill of the thing you're trying to lift. If, you're, if you've got the help, do you just get someone else to move this, but you get it, Get it as close to you as you can to underneath it. I mean, even a rock that you can't pick up, you can slide, you can pivot, you can move on the ground if you're reasonably strong. I mean, of course, you know, position yourself properly, you know, lift with your legs, bend at the knees, do all that sort of stuff, right? Um, but the trick is, it's, it, especially since it's downhill, it doesn't take much to get it on the dolly. Right, once we're there, we just, Lift it up, right? And now we got, <laughs> and now we got a rock we can move, right? Uh, a trick for going uphill, instead of pushing like this, is to actually get it right into your hips and just use your, right? That way you're, you're taking your back out of the equation, right? I've got this in my hips. See, I'm not even using my back, right? You just I'll hold on to it to steady it, but really, you, it's all leg, right? The leg and back is just straightening out. Right? Or you pull it up the hill, whatever works for you, right? But yeah, the dolly is the best. Um, but I mean, if you only had to move a couple of rocks, uh, it wouldn't make sense to buy a dolly for that. I, I have a large property here, I do a lot of stuff like this. And I mean, if you've got a house, it's handy to have a dolly whenever you have to move anything heavy. Um, you know, you can move a couch with one of these, you can move a fridge, an oven, a stove. It's a really handy thing to have if you have a house for moving anything heavy without any help. And sometimes even with help, it's much smarter for one person to move a refrigerator with one of these than to, for two people to try to pick it up. Um, it's, it's just easier, <laughs> right? So the dolly, highly recommended, best thing to do. But let's say you've got a garden plot or an allotment or you're just doing a one-time thing and you don't think you're gonna need a dolly. What do you do in a place without a dolly? Another trick is if you've got a pretty sturdy wheelbarrow, I mean, this has to be a wheelbarrow that you can trust, that's well made. This one's all steel, right? There's no wood on this one. It's, it's not new, it's like 10 years old, but it's all steel, right? So with that approach, right, you just you tip it over like that. All right, so you tip it over like this. You get your foot down on the wheelbarrow like I just did. Ideally, again, this is a two-person job, ideally. But anyway, you get the rock in there, right? It's right between your legs, so it's hard to hurt your back. You could even sit on your wheelbarrow. <laughs> or you get it in there like that, right? All right, so I'm grabbing it like this. I'm bending down, and I've got my foot right there on the bottom foot. This is just to keep, sliding, keep it from sliding my way, help it dig in. I'm just gonna lean back, okay? Then you reposition the rock in the wheelbarrow. 
right? So it's not moving around when you're moving the wheelbarrow. But this takes very little energy, very little work to get it into the wheelbarrow, right? Now that you got it in the wheelbarrow, you know, it's easy to move it around, right? We can, we can go up the hill, take it wherever we need to take it. So that's another really easy way to move rocks. It, because you're putting all this sideways and lateral pressure on the structure of the wheelbarrow, it's not necessarily good for the wheelbarrow to be doing that. Wheelbarrow, I keep saying it wrong. Um, so it's not good for it to do that, but as long as everything's tight and it's a strong, well-made wheelbarrow, it can take it, right? I mean, these are tools that are meant to be used, right? So if you've got a few rocks to move, you haven't got a dolly, and it's a Saturday afternoon, you don't want to go to the store to buy a dolly, <laughs> just use your wheelbarrow, but use it that way, right? And that's how you can move it around with that technique. I got one more trick for you if you haven't got any of this stuff. And uh, it's a way to move a heavy rock using garbage. <laughs> Let me show you. All right, so back a thousand years ago, uh, when I was a young man, I used to be a painter, and I worked with older men. And uh, if you tell a young man, move that refrigerator, they'll try to pick it up to show how strong they are. You ask an old man to move a refrigerator, he'll usually show you how smart he is. Mostly because he, he can't show you how strong he is, because <laughs> the risk <laughs> of wrecking his back is very high. And painters had this great trick for moving heavy stuff like refrigerators and stoves and stuff like that, where they just get you to lift up one end of it and they'd slide a towel underneath whatever it was. This only works on a kitchen floor, a slippery floor, tile floor, linoleum floor, that sort of thing, right? You put a towel underneath the refrigerator and just pull the towel and the refrigerator would just glide along because you've reduced the friction. Okay, so if you've got an old piece of plastic from a construction site or some something you did or you just fished it out of someone's trash or whatever, it's going to be reasonably strong. Plastic, this is vaporberry for a house, 6 mil poly. Um, and ideally it should be about, I don't know, 4 feet wide by 6 feet long, but it doesn't really matter, okay? So all I got to do is bundle up at one end and uh, with this uh, this rope here you want a reasonably strong rope this rope is uh, almost a half an inch in diameter not exactly maybe three-eighths of an inch in diameter okay so I'm gonna make a loop like this and pass the rope and pass the rope through the loop okay that's called uh, that's called a lark's head okay all I've done is pass the rope I made a bite I passed the rope through the loop Okay, that tightens up, right, the harder you pull the tighter it gets. Then behind that I just do what's called a, a, half, a half hitch, a half hitch, okay, so I've got two knots, okay, a lark's head and a half hitch. Okay, now you hold this down, uh, you can't see here, but I'll hold it down and just snug those both up really good. Okay, so you've got two points of contact on the plastic. The rope should be able to pull on the plastic without it slipping off the end of the plastic. Now let me show, show you what I do with this rock. All right, so all we got to do is take the rock, put the plastic down, roll the rock onto the plastic. Get it as far up as you can. Ideally, the plastic's even longer and you can tie it off at the back so the rock can't slide out the back. But even a small piece like this will work just fine, right? Now I can grab this rope and I can pull, right? And the rock will come with me. Okay? Now there's a, tr there's a trick to pulling heavy stuff like that. Let me show you. You gotta be moving heavy stuff. You wanna have your hands really close to your weight. Ideally, you want the rope around your back like this, but this one isn't long enough. Hands close to the waist, get low, and pull like that, in little bits, right? So you're not doing big long pulls, right? You're doing little bits, little increments, right? Trying to keep your back straight. I can see my battery's almost dead, so I gotta wrap this up. That's three ways to move heavy stuff like rocks in the garden without wasting your back. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. And until next time, get out there, get at it, watch your back. Have fun in your garden. Thanks for watching.
Hey folks, if you live in the USA and want to help support the channel, check out the Hudson Valley Seed Company and use my coupon code MARITIME10 to get a 10% discount on whatever you buy. In addition, all seed orders over $35 will get free shipping. They have a great selection of seeds, so maybe give that a try this year and that'll help support everything I'm doing here. Thanks a lot.